So once the car's up in the air, the first step is going to be to remove the two tunnel braces. Uh, there are a total of 10 T45 Torx bolts that need to come off. Anytime you're dealing with torques, just be careful. Don't use an impact to break anything loose. It's real easy to strip them out. There's two exhaust hangers we need to remove. Uh, the first one is at the front of the gas tank. Uh, you don't want to remove the bracket itself, just push the rubber off of the exhaust. So the second hanger is just in front of the differential. Push this one off of the exhaust as well. This is going to be an M10 triple square, um, and we need to unbolt the exhaust hanger on both sides. The uh, splash shield down here gets in the way a little bit. Um, you may have to use a little uh, swivel extension to get in there. Next we're going to unplug the exhaust valve harness. Uh, it's above the exhaust and uh, you'll just be pushing down on the top of it at the back and then you'll be able to pull it right out. Um, sometimes they're a little cruddy so you might have to kind of push in a little bit and then push down on the tab and then pull out. You should hear kind of a snap when it comes loose. And then repeat this on the other side. Next we're going to just lower the exhaust all the way to the ground. Make sure you have cardboard or towels or something on the floor so you don't scratch up the tips. Next we're going to remove the four nuts that hold the heat shield that protects the center support bearing. Then we want to just pull the seat shield off. Be careful not to deform it. You can kind of pull it free of the nuts and then the studs and then slowly pull it in. You shouldn't have to remove any of the splash shielding. So here's the movement of your center support bearing carrier. All right, so now that we have access to the carrier, uh, we need to cut the stock carrier off. Um, so I think it's easiest to keep it hooked up. Don't unbolt it yet. Uh, and then we're gonna make two cuts, one on the left and one on the right. We're gonna go all the way through until we get up into the rubber. Uh, so we gotta cut through two layers of, of uh, steel here. Um, make sure you don't slip and hit your drive shaft. Do not hit the drive shaft. And uh, definitely wear proper uh, PPE, eye and ear protection. Uh, this is, cuts can take a little bit, so. Don't have to 
one layer. Cutting it off, huh? Cutting it off. All right, we're through one side. Now shift the exhaust over to the other are you, side. Are you, uh, you're not videoing this then? Yeah, I am. Oh, you are? Okay. I don't know, it does. I don't use all the footage, but. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting the right places to cut on there? Yeah, I like to show exactly like where the easiest place to cut it. Yeah. That's a pretty stiff deal. Yeah, it's uh, it's not as wobbly as I, as you would think. The the carrier itself. It was wasn't really flexing. I wonder if the, the flex is in the is it in the, the carrier itself or is it? It's in the center bushing. Yeah. Well, we saw the carrier moving a little bit too, right? Yeah, we did on that first video, but it was a little bit hard to see. I didn't feel like I saw it moving as much in this okay. second video when we had better lighting. Yeah, yeah. Like it might have just been the, the camera moving around. Mm -hmm. but, right. The new one's definitely stiffer. Alright. So now we're going to unbolt. We're going to undo the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the stock carrier on. Let this thing drop down so we can kind of bend it and get the drive shaft out. There's that one. Alright, now we've removed the metal pieces. There is still a little bit of a, like a sh shell around here, which I'm just gonna remove to get it out of the way. All right, so I've got the drive shaft here off the car. Um, I just wanted to explain a little bit better with better uh, lighting and everything, uh, what exactly you need to cut. Um, so on the OEM carrier bracket, you're gonna cut right here and here, and that's gonna allow you to spread this thing open to drop the drive shaft out of it, right? Um, before you're able to get the drive shaft out, there is a layer of rubber that's going to connect this bearing here, the center support bearing, to the carrier itself. Um, and so you're going to need to cut all the way around it in order to release the drive shaft. Um, and so what it is, you have a kind of an accordion shaped piece of rubber that's coming up that runs kind of all the way around this. Um, so it's kind of a vertical rib with a little bit of accordion to it. Um, and we need to remove not only the carrier, but then we need to remove all of that rubber. Um, and you can see there's, I've left a base layer of rubber on here, so basically removed this center rib. Um, so cut down as flush as you can. If you leave a little bit in the middle, it's not a big deal. Um, but don't remove this base layer of rubber. You can see here where I, I tried to start removing this. It's molded right onto the bearing, and it's going to be a real pain. So um, I've actually designed these. Uh, bushings to go on top of this. So if you remove the, all that rubber all the way down to the middle, this will actually be loose, so don't do that. Um, and then you can see the way this these line up here. Um, there's kind of a lip here on the right, and it's actually a flexible kind of overhang of uh, rubber on the right side here. Um, and so this should kind of just go right down there in that lip, and then this other side should hang off of the, the left which is the rear of the vehicle, uh, yeah, front, back, All right? So those will just uh, kind of clamp around there nice, and we'll go uh, under the car here and attach it.
and just go back and forth, tightening up either side. So you stay nice and square on there. All right, and then the isolation dampers, we're going to put those on. doesn't matter which way you put them on. Slide them onto the end. Up your feet. And you're going to put the bolt up through all of it. This keeps everything separated. No uh, hard contacts. Keeps the MVH levels down. So this is a uh, five millimeter hex to do these. Uh, at least on these shoulder bolts. No guarantee I'm gonna keep these shoulder bolts forever. And uh, to put the drive shaft uh, carrier together, that is a six millimeter. This is a shoulder bolt, so you can get it tight. Next we're going to put the heat shield back on. Just a note on this, because we're staying away from the factory heat shield with the uh, drive shaft carrier, there's a possibility if you've deformed your heat shield at all while you've took it out or you know, while it's just been sitting around, that it could be uh, making very light contact or no contact just be very close to the drive shaft carrier and uh, generally you get rattles when things are just barely touching or not touching so if that is the case either pull it away a little bit from the drive shaft carrier or push it up so it's making firm contact um, but if you haven't uh, done anything to the heat shield it should be just fine still so. very much torque on these uh, we're gonna put the exhaust back up I like to put jack stand under one side if you're doing it by yourself it's a little bit easier to deal with just go up little by little Before you go all the way up, uh, plug in your sensors again for your exhaust valve. Go up the rest of the way. And you're going to put your M10 triple square bolts in. Hold the bracket. These can be a little tricky to line up just to Make sure you're not cross-threading anything. The bolt has to pass through the bracket plus a little bracket that holds the rear balance on. We're going to put the two exhaust hangers back, get the one back here by the diff, and then the other one up by the gas tank.